Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about the visual cortex of the brain. I had mentioned to you that there are three areas of the brain that music affects majorly, and those are the auditory, the visual, and the motor cortex. I also told you about a number of other areas in the brain that music affects, but let's talk about the visual cortex. The visual cortex is five times larger than the auditory cortex. So it's already established in the brain that we learn more by, and quicker and easier, more by seeing than we do by hearing. I also mentioned to you, but when a child learns to read, they have to use their ears first and then their eyes. So they're using the auditory cortex before the visual cortex. But the visual cortex is extremely important for learning. It's also important, it's called visual perception. It helps a child, if a child has any kinds of problems with visual perception, they're going to have difficulty accurately learning how to read. But visual perception is also when a, a teacher gives um, a direction to a student uh, to maybe go to the principal's office. If they have visual perception, they're going to be able to make it to the principal's office. They have a sense and feel of direction. Also, when they're copying something from a board, being able to look at the board and then being able to take what they see on the board and then transfer it to their paper on their desk. That's all visual perception, and that's all related to the visual cortex of the brain. But there's another aspect of the visual cortex of the brain, and that's visual spatial learning. That is extremely important because that's when a child forms pictures in their mind. When they do that, it helps with reading comprehension. Think about when you read a book, especially a fiction book. Are you thinking about the book? Are you thinking about the, the different aspects of what you're reading? Are you forming a picture in your mind? When we form those pictures in our mind, then it helps us with reading comprehension. We will remember what we read. There's another aspect of visual, uh, spatial visual, and that is when we're doing math, particularly with higher levels of math, you have to be able to see in your mind those pictures, that, that math problem, how it relates, everything related to it, and it will help you with math. For instance, Albert Einstein was a mathematician. He was a great mathematician, but he was a spatial genius. When he died, his brain was divided into five sections. They didn't do a very good job, by the way, of dividing it. But anyway, uh, Dr. Marion Diamond at the University of California at Berkeley, she received one of the sections. And the section that she received had to do with the visual spatial area, the visual cortex of the brain. They found that Einstein's brain in his spatial areas, those areas of the brain that have to do with spatial, it was 25% larger than the normal brain. So he was definitely a spatial genius. He saw pictures in his mind. E equals MC squared was a product of his mind before he ever put it on paper and before it was ever proven. <clears throat> now, he was also a musician. He played the violin. And if you read any of his biographies, his son and his friends talk about that when he was having difficulty coming up with a certain problem, that he would take his violin out and he would play it. And he would play it until he was able to solve and resolve the issue and the problem that he was working on. He said that music helped him to see the, the problems that he was working on. That's the spatial area of the brain working. Okay, now, <clears throat> also, there are things out there now, there's whole curriculum around STEM subjects. STEM is uh, with science, technology, engineering, and math. Now, they've also added two more M's. They've added music and medicine to it. But all of those subject, subjects require understanding spatial relationships. Okay, they're using, they're needing to use the visual spatial areas of their brain so that they can see all of these different things in science, in technology, in engineering, in math, and music, and medicine. Everything is the product of seeing it in the mind first before they really truly understand it. So it's an extraordinarily important part of the brain that you want to develop, that you want your children to develop, and that they have a good spatial um, intelligence and understanding. It will help them with reading and with reading comprehension. It will help them with all of the science and the engineering, all those math problems, because they'll be seeing those things in their mind. 
Okay, <clears throat> also one thing that's um, the spatial areas of the brain are also tied to creativity. Uh, kids who are highly creative are usually highly spatial. And as a little side note, they usually, and they tend to dream in color. Most people dream in black and white. All right, so let me leave you with a quote. This is by Yo-Yo Ma, who's a very talented cellist. He says this, music enhances the education of our children by helping them to make connections and broadening the depth with which they think and feel. If we are to hope for a society of culturally literate people, music must be a vital part of our children's education. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.